Welcome back. This is the third part of the series, Battleground. Please watch the previous parts to enjoy the manhwa. Previously, Danny told Chin and Hobbin the secret of their body modifications. Chin was clearly shocked by the revelation, but Danny calmly stated how they must have planted them. He guessed that they could have done it when they were knocked out. He said, behind their left ear, when the blue field glowed, they could feel some sort of a shock. Listening to him, Hobbin couldn't understand how could they do it. Danny told them he had sensed it ever since they got on the plane, so they must have implanted it before that. He added, maybe the blue field is originated from a space satellite, and the chips inside their bodies makes it visible to them. It must be the cause for releasing deadly toxins whenever they enter the blue magnetic field. Chin was baffled by Danny's explanation. He was sure that they can't remove it. But, suddenly he questioned, how did he knew when the field would stop? With a pause, Danny looked up and replied, the sky looked weird. Chin clearly didn't understand him. Danny continued as he said, it may be the effect from the electromagnetic field shot from the satellite. He saw some unnatural clouds. It was as if they were drawing a circle where the field would stop. Chin realized the reason for the sudden climate changes. It was simply unbelievable. When he thought about the satellite and the transplantation of chips into human bodies, he knew these kidnappers were not any ordinary criminal organization. They are a huge group, bigger than he could even imagine. Right now, he had got a critical information for his survival. His location was closer to the edge of the blue field, so he thought they should start moving. He called Hobbin to get going, but Hobbin was gesturing him to keep quiet. There were people nearby. They were starting to show up one by one. As Chin had expected, there were a lot of people teaming up. Chin told her to move quickly. There was no need to bump into them. Hobbin agreed, but she worriedly glanced back towards Tai Jack. She thought, if they leave him like that, he might die without even a fight. But no, she suddenly realized, Jack is a serial killer. He deserves to die. Hobbin started moving. Jack was staring at leaving Hobbin. At the port, it had started raining. Chin saw their boat. He told Hobbin that they can ride the boat and get out of here. Just when Chin glanced, he heard a scream. An injured man was begging for his life to a bald man. He said, he is lost. He begged for his life and to spare him. But, the bald man was not a bit interested in it. He fired his gun without hesitation. The man died instantly. Chin looked at Hobbin and said, it would be difficult to return to the boat. There are too many enemies here. Hobbin looked around and said, what if they go back to the lighthouse and then get to the boat from other side? There is no one near it. Chin asked, then, we will have to swim. Didn't you say, you couldn't swim? Hobbin hesitantly replied, she is not confident, but she thinks it's possible if she goes slowly. Chin then agreed to her suggestion. Right then, the bald man looked at them. But, it was too late for him. Chin had headshot him with the crossbow. The man died instantly. Chin and Hobbin got on their move. They started running towards the lighthouse. As they were running, the heavy rain was covering up their heavy footsteps. So they didn't get detected. Chin thought, with this, they could get to their boat and leave. But, suddenly, Hobbin got shot right on the shoulder from the back. The gunshot had made a huge noise. Two nearby players could spot them over the bridge. Immediately, multiple gunshots rained on both of them. But, Chin had taken Hobbin to a cover. Hobbin was in pain. Chin knew she wasn't hit at a vital spot. Hobbin's life was not in danger. But, he didn't know where the gunshot came from. The two players were firing without rest. Chin knew he first has to deal with them. In that moment, he shot the nearest one. The arrow got hit on his vital point. But, with the arrow, Chin had run out of arrows. His quiver was empty. Chin cursed his fate. He took out his pistol. But, he had only few bullets. Even if he used all of them, he couldn't possibly kill all the enemies. He currently didn't know where the first shot came from. Near the lighthouse, a huge boat was closing towards the port. On the boat, the rifle was fuming. The man holding the sniper rifle said, It seems I got rusty. I was aiming for the head. There were three people on the boat. The man with the rifle was none other than the gas mask guy. He was the one to shoot on Hobbin. He habitually said, shall we start the second round of this rabbit hunt? The rain was falling heavily. There was no stopping it. Hobbin and Chin were still behind the cover. Chin asked, how is it? Do you think you can move? Hobbin muttered two weak words. For now, Chin knew even it was not a vital injury, it was also not a minor injury. This pain was not something ordinary people could handle. He made a quick decision. They have to give up on the boat. First, they need to get out of here. Chin jumped forward to engage in the battle. But, what he saw was, nothing. There was no one. It was all empty. He questioned, did everyone die fighting among themselves? But, he also thought, it was their chance. They can get out. Just when he was about to finish his sentence, a huge impact fell on his back. He was saved by this bulletproof vest. But, the impact was so strong that, his mouth spit out blood. The bullet came from the lighthouse. The shooter was the same man who injured Hobbin. The man was holding a sniper rifle, 
with an 8x scope. It was the gas mask guy. He immediately reloaded his rifle, and there was another shot. This time it missed the target entirely. Chin realized it was a sniper. Chin immediately ran towards the buildings. Before the man could reload, Chin had gone into hiding. The man chuckled and said, as expected, he's quick at hiding. He looked at the house and said, shall I get going? Inside the house, Chin was coping with his internal injury. He had left injured Hobbin in the open because it was an emergency. He thought there were no enemies nearby, so she should be fine. He was saved by the bulletproof vest, but he had also got internal injuries. He needed painkillers. Also, he had only few bullets left. Currently, he was in the warehouse, so he thought he should find something useful. After a moment, he saw someone hiding. He immediately got to shoot the enemy. It was Kim Namsu. He thought it was Assemblyman Kim Namsu, but it was just his brain playing tricks on him. It was an old man, trembling in fear. Chin was just confused as the man was of same age and Korean. He thought the man was hiding because he couldn't find any weapon. So he guessed there was no any loot in the warehouse. He pulled his gun on the man and said, if you answer my question, I'll spare you. Have you seen a Korean politician since you came here? The man was startled by his question. The man suddenly replied, I have. You are talking about assemblyman Kim Namsu, aren't you? Chin was taken aback. He lowered his gun. The man added, he often saw him as a politician in real life, so he caught his attention even in the plane. He saw him land around here. The man added, he can tell where he is. Chin was overjoyed. Finally, he had a proper clue. Suddenly, they heard multiple gunshots. There were people fighting outside the warehouse. He knew staying in the warehouse was dangerous. Chin turned and said to the old man, I'll help you get out of this place. In return, guide me to where Assemblyman is. The old man smiled and thanked him. But when he said that, the man was holding a crossbar. He jumped to attack on Chin. He was planning to kill Chin and take his weapon. Just when he was about to hit him, Chin shot the man in his head. It was so quick that the old man couldn't even react. The man collapsed on the ground. Chin said he had expected it. He didn't need him anyway. Assemblyman is nearby was already a great clue for him. Now he could find him. He remembered those words of his mentor again. Be careful. People make mistakes when they follow their emotions. These mistakes will someday cause you trouble. So always watch your back. But right now, Chin was in even greater danger. A grenade was closing in on him from the back. The grenade exploded inside the warehouse. It was the gas mask guy again. He said to his subordinates, he'll let them finish up the rest. As the two guys went inside, one person asked, I heard there was a pretty girl with him. The gas mask guy laughed and said, that's right. Once the bastard's dead, the girl will be yours as promised. The second guy licked his lips as he smiled. But the man was startled. He had heard gunshot earlier. So why was there only a single body? Just when he was approaching the body, Chin immediately fired his gun. He was hiding under the burned body. The man was dead in an instance. It was a perfect headshot. The second guy was stunned. But at the moment, Chin was again on the run. The man cursed and fired at Chin. As Chin was running, he thought he had expected them to hear the gunshot, but they were quick. He has to eliminate them one by one to survive. Just when he was outside of the warehouse, he heard the voice. You sure are amazing. The voice belonged to the gas mask guy. The man immediately shot at Chin. On the other side, Hobbin was somehow alive and coping with the pain. She thought it was quiet again. She didn't know where Chin had been. First, she has to get out of here. So, she had to find him. Hobbin stood up and started moving. She just wished Chin to survive. On the other side, Chin was running for his life. He was running and firing at the same time. He recognized the gas mask guy. The masked man continued to fire and asked, where did the girl who drove the bike go? Did she die? Why don't you ask for help from your colleague again? Chin was hiding behind a tree, but the bullets from the masked guy were chipping off the tree trunk. Chin was looking at the man and thought, why was he only using sniper from this distance? He guessed the man only had that one gun. So, if that was the case, immediately, Chin tried to close it on the gas masked man. He has dodged the rifle and was absolutely close to the man. Chin's gun was now close to his neck. The man came to realize Chin was too close. His gun barrel was too long, he can't. Suddenly, there was a gunshot. Chin was bleeding from the bullet wound on his chest. He didn't even realize what had happened. There was a revolver. The gas mask guy also had an extra revolver on him. He has used it on Chin. He said, you turned out to be more boring than I expected, my Korean friend. You must have gotten rusty after being discharged. Chin realized the man knew him personally. Chin was having a hard time breathing. He said, pretending to only have one gun. You must have hidden it as a trump card. The man smiled and pointed to shoot on Chin's head. 
He said, farewell. At the same time, they heard another voice. You guys, looks like you are having fun. The two men were startled and glanced over towards the voice. The gas mask guy didn't know who it was. So he asked, who are you? The man was none other than Danny Jack Daniel. He smiled and said, me, I'm just a serial killer passing by. The gas mask guy didn't understand. He asked again, who are you? But Danny replied the same. He smiled and replied, I'm just a serial killer who's passing by. There was no hint of lie on his face. Chen was confused to see him. The same goes for the gas mask man. He signed and turned to finish his prey. But the other person with him was laughing at Danny. He thought Danny was crazy. He couldn't stop laughing at him. The mask guy told him to stop blabbering. He added, they don't know when the magnetic field is going to narrow again. Let's just kill them and get out of here. The other person replied, all right. But right then, this person pulled his gun over the gas mask guy. He was angry at him for telling what to do and not to do since the beginning. He was furious and said, I held back when you kept treating me as your subordinate because you promised to give me the young Asian girl. Do you seriously think you are the leader? The gas mask guy turned to face his partner. He asked what was he doing all of a sudden. The man pointing his gun grinned and said, the girl he promised him is not here. He asked, if he kill this guy, how will he find the girl? The gas mask guy replied, she must be hiding around here. So first let's kill the guy and then look for her. Looking at them, Chen thought they were suddenly having an internal conflict. Suddenly, the man was persistent. He was still pointing his gun at him and said, no, we must find the girl first. Unless we find the girl you promised us, we're not going to follow you around. The gas mask guy was silent. After a brief moment, he said, all right, fine, let's look for the girl first. Chin couldn't help but think he got some time for himself to survive. But in the next moment, the gas mask guy shot his partner in the head. His action was so fast that it happened in the blink of an eye. The bullet made the blood sprout like a shower. He stood there and looked at the corpse. He said, horny son of a bitch, blabbering on without knowing his place. The rain was cleaning the blood on his gas mask. He clenched his gun again and said, now let's finish where we left off. He looked at Chin and said, he doesn't need to worry about the girl because she will be following him soon. The man held his gun on Chin's head. Just when he was going to pull the trigger, a small knife pierced his hand. The man was taken by surprise and also lost his weapon. He turned to look for the culprit. Just then, Danny was already on him. The man evaded his kick, but Danny was not finished. He attacked again, and this time, his kick landed on his target. But the man had blocked it by his two hands. He used that force to make a distance. He was surprised by the sudden change of event. He asked, didn't you say you were just a serial killer passing by? Why are you helping this guy? Danny jumped for his next attack. As he did, he said, what a strange question. Serial killers kill people. His kick landed with a devastating power. He laughed and said, why would I need any other reason? But his attack was again blocked. This time, the man had used his sniper. The gas mask guy had figured that Danny was not any ordinary guy. He quickly made his distance. Similarly, he threw a smoke bomb. The bomb instantly covered the area with smoke. Now, the gas mask guy was on the run. He knew he was at a disadvantage and he needed to get out of here. His primary target was going to die anyway. Chin was in his worst condition. His consciousness was fading away. He didn't even know what was he even doing here. Two years ago, that day, he had heard that same question. Chin was nearly killed in that terrorist attack. He couldn't remember anything. In those burning flames, the thing he could remember was his partner's left hand. After that incident, he was unable to return in the military due to his injuries. His mind and body were dying from the aftereffects. His eyes were sunken deep. He looked like he had been sleepless for years. Suddenly he heard that voice. It looks like you have lived your life on a hospital bed. This person was Assemblyman Kim. With a gentle smile he said, it's been few weeks now. You will rot here at this point. He had brought some strawberries for him. He said, will you eat these? I heard you are supposed to bring fruits to hospital visits. Chin neglected saying, I'm fine. Chin was clearly annoyed. But Assemblyman Kim was like a nosy and ignorant and immature uncle. He didn't give up and said, you should try them, as they were good for cancer. Chin annoyingly said, I didn't have cancer. But Assemblyman said, no, you probably have a cancer, heart cancer at that. He added, the rehabilitation center won't do the job. Not only did you hurt your leg in the battle, but you also hurt your heart. That's why you don't have any will to work on your rehabilitation. He then asked Chin a simple question, why did you become a soldier? Chin replied, he had confidence in using his body, and he didn't have anything particular he wanted to do in life. Assemblyman said, you could have worked other jobs. Why become a soldier? Didn't you become a soldier because it was your dream to be one? Chin was silent. 
Chin had a grave look on his face as he said, the guys who dreamt of becoming soldiers died hugging him on that day. Instead of an honorable soldier, the guy with no goals was the one to survive. That burden is too great for someone like him to lift. He thought, it is better to retire like this than to return to the military. Assemblyman Kim was little surprised, but he couldn't say anything. With a pause he said, do you know that there is no such thing as a meaningless death? Saving you must have been his will, and the will of the dead must be carried on by someone. Wouldn't he be happy if you continued living? Your partner, Chin came to a sudden realization. It was like finding an answer for an unknown question he was looking for all along. He looked at the assemblyman. He knew assemblyman was a good person, just like his partner who saved his life. That partner was his best friend and the only family assemblyman had. After finishing rehab, Chin left the military and went to the assemblyman. He was the only person who knew about his struggles regarding his partner who had saved his life and whom he decided to treat as a father. That day, he promised himself to use his life for the sake of the assembly man. Opening his eyes, Chin could hear a voice calling for him. He didn't know who it was. Suddenly he woke up. He was not dead. He was still alive. The voice came from Hobbin. She was shouting to run away. Danny Jack Daniel was trying to stab him. He was free from his restraints. At the moment, Chin couldn't even move due to his injuries. Danny pushed away Hobbin and told her to stop interfering. But Hobbin was not giving up. She continued her struggle and said, You helped us earlier, why are you being like this all of a sudden? Hearing this, Jack smiled and said, Help, I saved him in order to find you. But, since now that he had found her, he just needs to kill him, so that they can stay together. Jack was going to attack on Chin. Hobbin continued to shout for Chin. She couldn't hide her tears. Chin was at the death door. He knew he has to survive. In that moment, he caught the stabbing hand of Jack in midair. He looked at Jack and said, Look serial killer Jack. Despite being on a death door and having heavy injuries, he said, let's make a deal. Hearing these words, Jack couldn't believe it. He asked, what deal is he taking about? Someone who is about to die, what can he do for him? Chin smiled and said, I will let you into the team. Jack was stunned. For a second, he couldn't believe what he heard. He grinned his teeth and asked furiously, are you kidding me? Did the bullet hit your head earlier? He couldn't control his anger. Chin continued as he said, I'm not joking. Can't you tell it from those guys earlier? Everyone has started to team up one by one. He added, in the future fighting as a solo will slowly become harder. If you want to survive, teaming up is safer and more efficient. Jack was in daze. He knew what Chin meant. Suddenly, Hobbin interrupted. She was hesitant to let Jack join them. She asked, letting him join the team, I thought he was a serial killer. Will we be going together with someone like him? Chin knew what he was doing very well. He said, that man is definitely a heinous criminal who has killed dozens of people. Describing him as a devil won't be enough. But only heinous criminals came here in the first place. He smiled and added, devils have to fight with devils. Hearing this, Jack gave out an evil laugh. He licked his lips and said, good thinking. He added, he will join the team. But only if he wins his bet. At the same time, Jack was pointing his revolver on Chin. Chin recognized the revolver. It was the same the gas mask guy was using. Jack realized what he was thinking, so he said, the gas mask guy dropped it when they were fighting, so he brought it with him. He held the gun on his head and said, the game will be solo Russian roulette. Put this gun on the head and pull the trigger. If you survive, you win. Then, I'll join the team without complaint. Chin was suddenly stunned. He didn't know Jack was this crazy. The revolver has seven bullet spots. Moreover, he wants him to pull the trigger three times. It's almost half. On top of that, he wants him to pull it thrice in a row. It's no different than telling him to die. But Jack was serious with him. Hobbin was similarly in a pinch. She asked Chin if he is really going to do it. She added, it would be better to just use it to kill Jack instead. But Chin simply asked what she will do if he fails to shoot him. Chin held the revolver and said, if not for this, he will die from the wounds anyway. He spun the barrel and said, if he doesn't do this, Jack will kill him. So, there's no other way. This was the life he promised to use for the assembly man. If he can't use it for that purpose, it's better to just die instead. Chin held the gun on his head and let out a heavy gasp. His eyes filled with determination. Just like that, he pulled the first trigger. The sound of clicking echoed. Then another one and another. That's it. He was still alive. Hobbin was delighted to see Chin alive. Chin was lucky enough to survive three triggers. But Chin suddenly pulled another one. Hobbin was shocked. Then another and another. He had used six empty bullets. Jack was similarly stunned. Chin had used all but one bullet. He took out the remaining bullet and asked, What do you think? He tossed the bullet towards Jack smiling and he asked, Are you willing to come under me? 
Chen Huiyang had just survived from the death door twice in a row. He even completed the bet from pleasure killer Danny Jack Daniel. Will Jack join in the team? Will they survive the next zone? Let's find out in the next part of the series, Battleground. The link will be updated in the description. Join the fun. If you are someone who loves reading manhwa and animes, subscribe now and join us in our journey. Also, get notified for new manhwa updates and hidden gems. Thank you for watching this video and see you again.